Greetings fellow fig lovers. Lance here. And Mary over here. So what we're looking at right here is the Sissio Nero mother tree. And it, it's really uh, packed in here among quite a few other fig trees. And it doesn't really quite get the degree of sun as many of my trees. There's a big oak right there. Skinny. Another one there. When I first planted these, <laughs> They didn't get a whole lot of shade. These trees hardly had any leaves on them. But uh, after a few years, they've been putting out some leaves. So I might have to get my buddy Kevin over here with me to drop these trees. I may even have to get a crane to pull them out, do it right. But that's a that's a big ordeal. Well, not happening anytime soon. Yeah. But we do have one ripening up. And since Mary's here, we're, we're getting kind of aggressive with... Uh, Doing some fig tastings. This one's crackling nicely. It is softening up. Would I let it hang? Probably, but Mary's here and we're supposed to get some more rain this evening. I just checked the, the weather and that actually came off pretty easy. So let's take a closer look. So the sun has come out for us. It's really low. It's it's pretty early. The sun's pretty low, so I have to get the right angle here. Got some nice crackling. Tight eye. Always nice to see. Yeah, I need to learn to be more careful at how I take these off the tree and then back. I'm, I'm always kind of destroying the Especially on the thinner skinned ones. So you should take it by the neck? Yeah, get it up there by the neck. But even just like carrying it around in the bag, it seems to destroy the skin. I mean, yeah, it's not so pretty, but I mean, it doesn't really hurt the flavor. Just not so pretty for our YouTube viewers. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's put her on the scale here. Thirty grams on the smaller side. And let's slice her open. I wonder if I had to have a knife without the serration. That would give us a cleaner cut. Some of them you might not be able to. Yeah, it might depend on the fig. Looking pretty. Yeah. It, it's uh, starting that translucent shift in color. So another day would have been optimal, but it really doesn't look too bad. Slight cavity. The eye after cutting it looks a little open, but I think that was just from the cutting process because it was pretty tight earlier. Seeds look uh, somewhat small. Nice coloring. Ready to try it out? Yes. All right. Here's your half. Now, leaf has already started curling up, like you mentioned. <laughs> Let's get a better shot of it. Seed crunch. Yeah. <laughs> I was surprised right out, right out of the gate. Those little tendril thingies. Yeah, they're standing out. And you looked it up for me last night, but I can't remember yeah. the name. Like Penny and... But they definitely, those stem-like things, they stand <laughs> out. I'm not knocked over with any flavors. Mm-mm. Yeah, I could have used another day or two, but... I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a good fig. Mm -hmm. It's just that we have so many of these Mount Etna types. They kind of all run together in a way. There might be some slight differences. Maybe the ripening times. A slightly different flavor profile, a slightly different look. Some of them have tied eyes, which would be a big plus. This one had a tied eye. I, want, I wonder what's causing those stems to be so prominent. I mean, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just different. Yeah. But there's... 
maybe if we had another day or two. There's another one on there. Yeah, well, there are. Actually, this oh. this tree is very productive. It's it's got it's got figs at every node. In fact, that one is so low, it might actually be a late Braba. It's so hard to tell this time of year, and I can't even remember like if just keeping track of so many trees. I can't remember if I cut that one all the way back to the ground because I do that with a lot of young trees. I just cut them back and let them come back. And I may have done it with that one. I, I just, I don't even remember. And I, I can't keep notes of everything. It, it's just too much administrative work. Should I? Eh, maybe, but if I was doing that all the time, I wouldn't have time to take care of the fig trees. And other things. And other things, yeah. So, yeah. Anything to write home about on that? No. no. But maybe we didn't give it a fair shake. It was, it was really squishy. I mean, how much longer could it have hung without dripping juice? Well, at least another day. At least. Maybe two. But you're not going to be here tomorrow. Well, I come home. Yeah, but, <laughs> Eventually. Yeah, we're so tired at the end of the day by the time you get home. I'm not sure that we're really doing this, this variety justice. It is not on the coal list yet. No, it's not. And plus, it doesn't get enough sun. I mean, exactly. It's yeah, yeah, that too. Just too many uh, variables going into a lot of these fig trees. The name of that variety is slipping me. That's just on the other side of the oak tree that we were looking at. We might do a fig tasting on that. It might be having the same problem. You know, it just doesn't get enough sun. Beautiful fig, tasty fig. Throwing a blank on the name. Is it exquisitive? No, that's that's further down. It gets a fair amount of sun. It does get some shade during the day. Exquisito is just a, a really good tasty fig, but it has not been handling the rain as well as some of my other varieties. That's kind of hard to get rid of because it's, it's such a, a good variety. It might be one of those that even though it doesn't handle the rain as well as I would like, I just tolerate it because it's such a good variety. And then, you know, we're going to have some summers where it's really dry, and that's that's going to be a rocking tree. And this was the year the fig trees all grew about two feet. Oh, and then some. Yeah. Probably the slowest grower. I'm not sure which one it is, but it's probably grown. Yeah. One by the frog pond is the slowest grower. Oh, that's the... That's the Col de Don Blanc. It's just in a horrible spot. It doesn't get any sun. Or water, or attention, or growth. Yeah. yeah. Poor guy. So I'm going to have to move him. I keep saying that, but I got so many other trees to put in the ground. Just not at the top of my list. And I got so many other Col de Don varieties too. That Yeah, it's just, yeah. It, it keeps limping along shows up every year. Alrighty, what's next? Well, we'll have to walk the orchard, see what what's uh, ripening the most. I'm still drawing a blank on that other variety. To the left, to the right. To the left of that oak. Stay tuned for the answer. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't know that we did the Sissio Nero justice. I vaguely remember getting figs off of this last year that were much better. But not doing the fig tasting. We have no record. Yeah, no record. We're relying on our <clears throat> feeble minds. So maybe we'll we'll have to come back to the Sissio Nero uh, when we have a a riper fig. And of course, taking into account, it, it really doesn't get a lot of sun. Not only from the oaks, but it, it's actually like really close to a bunch of other fig trees. So it, it just doesn't really get a lot of sun. So that's the Sissio Nero.